Hey everybody, hope you're doing great. I'm Brian Jenkins with Circuit Crush, and today we're going to talk about functions in our Arduino tutorial. Now, from a bird's eye view, a function is a self-contained unit of program code designed to accomplish a particular task. Think of functions as building material for Arduino programs. Just as your house is made of wood, drywall, and other materials, Arduino programs are composed of different parts. These parts are functions. If you've programmed in C at all before, you're likely familiar with the function main, which every C program needs to have. If you've programmed Arduino before, you probably know that every sketch or Arduino program needs to have setup and loop. Since Arduino is based on C, main is there, it's just hidden. Arduino comes prepackaged with many different functions for handling different common tasks. Another cool thing about functions is that you can write your own custom functions to do whatever you want. And we'll talk more about that in another tutorial. So why use functions? Well, first, they save you from repetitious, boring programming. If you have to do a certain task several times in a program, you only need to write an appropriate function once. The program can then use that function wherever it needs to, or you can use the same function in different programs. Experience has shown that the best way to develop and maintain a large program is to construct it from smaller pieces. Each of these pieces is more manageable than the original large program, and these pieces are functions. Using functions is a good idea because it makes a program more modular, hence easier to read and easier to change or fix. Programmers can write functions to define specific tasks. Not only can these tasks find use in multiple places in the program, they can also find use in completely different programs altogether. This cuts down on repetitive work and duplicating the same code over and over again for different programs. For example, if you want to display something on the screen, you would use a serial.print function. And remember that the name before the dot is a library and the actual function comes after. Now sure, you could write a bunch of code from scratch to print some characters on your screen, but why reinvent the wheel, at least in this case? This has already been done and can be a huge time saver. Instead of writing a bunch of lines of code to handle the low-level operations of writing a character to the screen, you can just call, or invoke, the function that does this. Way easier. Now, let's dissect an example function, serial.print, and talk about the different parts. We're going to use the following code snippet, which I'm going to type here right in front of you, and focus on the function. So let's start this with serial.begin here in setup and then let's jump over to loop and type serial.print which is the function we're going to take a close look at and let's put in here 255 and then bin semicolon and let's type another serial.print statement and we're going to do this. Now let's go ahead and compile and upload it. And let's take a peek at what it's doing with the serial monitor. And it's not very interesting, but we can see here it's just printing a bunch of ones. So I'm going to turn that off. And let's talk about this. Now, first we need the serial.begin over here to get an output on our screen with the serial monitor. Without that, you wouldn't be able to see anything here. Now, I talked about the serial monitor in another tutorial, so that's all I'm going to say about that here. Next, we see this particular function, the serial.print function, has two parts with a period or dots in between them. Not all functions in Arduino are like this, like the delay function, which just looks like this. And I'm just going to comment it here. You put a value in here, a number of some sort, and it's just one part. So not all functions in Arduino have two parts, but many of them do. For the ones that do, the general format is a library name, the dot, and then the function name, where the library name is capitalized and the function name is not. 